this time of year your Swiss chard really comes on and as, as we get into the frost it just improves and gets better and better uh, it's done great and this is about for me for my family this is all the Swiss chard we need basically a 4 by 8 bed's worth right that's all the Swiss chard we need Hey, it's Greg here with MaritimeGardening.com and I thought it was time for another one of those State of the Harvest tours just to show you what's uh, what's coming out of the garden right now in terms of harvest here in the uh, uh, beginning of October 2021. So come on, let's have a look around, okay? So I got to do this uh, tour from a different angle because of the position of the sun. So it's early in the morning. So uh, I'm sort of coming at it from the opposite direction I normally do. <laughs> so uh, anyway, just uh, for those that are disoriented by this tour, it's usually uh, coming from the uh, from the entrance over there. But we got to go this way because the sun is in the, uh, the southeast right now. So uh, yeah, uh, starting back here. Uh, in terms of what's coming out of the garden right now, I'm still harvesting these beets. I really do have to en uh, engage in a serious... Uh, uh, beet pickling exercise soon. Um, the laziest year I've ever had here in the garden. I just can't seem to get myself motivated to do anything and I don't really uh, know why. I just, just in this weird state. I mean, I'm, I'm getting everything done. I'm just sort of dragging myself through it. Whereas normally I'm, I'm energized and excited to do things. But anyway, I got lots of nice beets and uh, we're eating them all the time. Um, but uh, yeah, definitely. Uh, and it hasn't, we haven't had a frost here yet. Still, end of September, no frost. So it's first September in quite some time that we've made it to the end of September with no frost. And as I stand here this morning, it's around 8.30 in the morning, and it's about uh, 12 Celsius. So it's uh, very nice, very warm. Uh, so uh, grapes, I've got grapes, you see down here. Oh yeah. Got grapes, but I got a bit of a, something is getting at these. Now I had a bear for sure that trashed my fence and I did a video about that if you want to check that out. I've reconstituted and sort of refortified the fence and it's been about oh three days since I did that. No revisiting yet. Anyway they trashed these grapes really good and they were at them but there was more than just bears at these because I noticed some scat here. These little pellets here. That's not bear. That's rabbit or porcupine, I think. Uh, can't be deer. I think it's porcupine. Looks like porcupine to me. Um, so uh, that's a problem. And we'll have to see uh, where that's all going. I don't know how they... This, this fence is a barbed wire fence, but there's a couple spots here. I could see them getting over here. Right? And this had all kinds of foliage, and the foliage is gone. Um, anyway. One of the things coming out of the garden right now is grapes, but uh, because of whatever's getting at them, it could be raccoon, I guess, but that doesn't look like raccoon poop to me. Um, I would have enough grapes to make. Last year I made grape jelly with my grapes. This year, this is all one plant. <laughs> anyway, I had enough to make wine. <laughs> I could have made I, I brought a few gallons worth of grapes, and they're almost all gone. <laughs> so you know, it's the first year I really lost grapes to... Uh, anything right I mean, sometimes the birds will get at them but the foliage the birds fly overhead and they can't see them so the foliage usually keeps them sort of protected from birds because they just don't you know know they're there uh, that, I mean that works to a certain extent it doesn't certainly does not make your grapes bird proof um, anyway I had enough grapes to make wine this year but uh, ain't gonna happen because <laughs> they're all gone uh, anyway that's grapes uh, I've got the beets here um, so the cucumber garden has been sort of dismantled, but I got all this uh, parsley here, uh, more than I could possibly keep up with. We're putting it in everything, but I'm going to have to uh, sort of blend and freeze some of this in cubes. I love parsley, love it. But luckily, it's a pretty tough plant, so I can continue to harvest for harvest this for at least another month, um, probably into November. Yeah. Uh, over here, I got these really late, I did a late planting of be uh, beans. And they actually work, but that's only because we haven't had a frost, right? I mean, I planted these like the beginning of August, which is way too late for planting a bush bean. This is the, I think, the provider variety, very fast growing. Um, anyway, they are producing beans that are of harvestable size. 
Um, so I guess if you don't get frost in September, you can plant these at like the beginning of August. I can't remember if it was the end of July or beginning of August, but it was, I've never planted beans that late. Um, but it, it's only been, it's only worked because we haven't had a frost. These plants would be destroyed if there was a frost. One frost and they're done, <laughs> right? Beans can't take any frost at all. Um, but anyway, yeah, we are getting, no, we're, get, we're getting beans, right? So they're nice too. Uh, so, uh, yeah, lots of different, I'm not going to go, just assume I've got lots of different herbs and French sorrel and stuff like that. I mean, that's always the case. Um, these beans are completely done. These ones would have been planted as early as possible, like in, uh, late May. Uh, here I got lots of, uh, carrots and just harvest them as I need them. I don't take them all at one go. I just, just take them as I need them. Uh, this is that, uh, Italian Punto, uh, dandelion. I have to say, if you... Uh, eater of dandelion if you like it and things this is a great variety to plant it never flowered all summer long <laughs> uh, it could be because I, I moved in into this shady spot but I mean the plants are big and mature I mean they look a bit they look a little bit uh, ratty but that's only because I, I've just been harvesting them basically whenever I make uh, spaghetti sauce or a soup we had a wonderful beef barley soup last night I put a bunch of these in right things like that I like um, uh, dandelion greens, and I really like them in, in like a tomato sauce for like a spaghetti, that sort of thing. I don't know what it adds, but it does add something, I have to say. So this is a great variety, Italian Punto uh, dandelion. Just keeps growing, keeps coming back, and uh, you know, it, it's a perennial. It'll come back next year. Over here we got uh, cilantro, lots of that. I'm going to have to pick that and make some uh, salsa. Uh, carrots are oh, the few carrots I did get to grow this year. These are some of them. They're coming great. This was a, a late planting of uh, the Cherry Falls tomato. The, the original ones I planted are have completely uh, just gone to just died basically. All right? This was this was the cherry plant right there. This is another this greenery is another variety of tomato. Right? Uh, at the same time I planted those, I planted these. Um, but these were planted in with garlic, and the garlic shaded them, and they hardly grew at all. Once I pulled the garlic out, these things just took off, right? And they're just starting to starting to ripen now, right? And they're really good. And that Cherry Falls tomato, really good one. But look at the space. This is this is one plant, almost a three foot radius, right? So I mean, I had three right here, planted right next to each other, and here. I've got three in an entire four by 10 bed and they're almost <laughs> like you could probably plant maybe one, two, three, four, five. I think six of them would pretty much use up all the space in this bed with no space to spare. Right. So, uh, I mean, it's a bit late and we're going to get frost. Oh, any day now, you know, uh, who knows? I mean, the forecast said that this is going to be like the warmest fall in the history of Canada sort of thing. So we'll see. Um, but Nova Scotia, especially where I live, sort of follows different rules. There was a couple, but a week ago we had one night where it was four Celsius in the morning. Um, so we were close to frost. But uh, anyway, I mean, most of the tomatoes on this plant are green. It was more of an experiment than anything else, but we are getting some, right? Uh, the other tomato plants are sort of, you know, kind of done or in that sort of harvest stage where they look look like crap. But, you know, every two days you bring in a big bowl of tomatoes and I'm using them in my food and also canning them just trying to use them up and uh probably probably some green tomato chow uh, in our future as well because i can't see all of these getting right before the uh the end of it um i harvested most of the uh eggplant but we got a couple couple left you can see that there right anyway i'm not sure if i'm going to bother with eggplant next year it just doesn't i have a heck of a time getting it to grow here um, you know, I've got good soil, everything that grows, you know, it's, it's some of the, the long growing heat loving varieties of plants. Um, I just don't have the best of luck with them. Peppers and eggplant in particular. I can get tomatoes cause there's some fast growing varieties of tomatoes. Um, and these were not direct seeded. I planted transplants in here this year. Um, uh, but this variety clearly is not, I'm going to have to maybe find a variety of eggplant that has a very short time to maturity start the seeds indoors in in the one south facing window i have in my house and uh you know if i'm i don't even know if it's worth the effort 
Uh, but I do know that my family, we love eggplant. We just love it. Everybody in the family loves it, especially my daughter. And she just got braces, so uh, we need we sort of... The kale is a bit of a problem with braces, <laughs> whereas eggplant isn't so much of a problem. So uh, i got to come up with a plan for next year of how to have a little more success with eggplant. Number one is finding a very fast maturing variety. Maybe one of the ones that grows smaller. If any of you has an idea of a fast days to mature, a short days to maturity variety of eggplant that you, you've had success with. If you have growing conditions like mine, where you get frost in late May and you get frost in September, um, you know, that sort of thing. Uh, and you don't have the hottest, sunniest summers in the world. Anyone in Newfoundland, for instance, that grows eggplant successfully, uh, <laughs> let me know what you're doing. <laughs> I'd love to know. Uh, anyway, we got lots of kale here, pretty much almost like trees, right? Um, as I mentioned in a previous video, my red Russian kale, they all seem to have been uh, attacked by some pest. Just went into the core in the center of the stalk and just turned it into this gross, smelly mush. Uh, that's the only one that's left. Uh, so I don't know what went on there, but, you know, it didn't seem to attack these ones at all, which is interesting. Um, so who knows why, right? But anyway, lots of these, and it's basically blanching and freezing season for these babies, right? One of those kale plants actually moved it to this little tulip garden. Uh, I think I'm going to pull the iris out of this iris is always, I like an iris, but in this garden, it always looks like crap. I think I'll just make this tulips and some sort of uh, heat loving thing like beans, things like that. And I might even make this garden a bit bigger this fall. Something I'm thinking about because I got a lot of space here. It's really not being used. I mean, it's kind of nice to have a big open area, but but why? <laughs> why not grow something in it, right? Um, so anyway, this is a, a kale, Siberian kale that I moved from this garden bed. So clearly the pest is here and not over here. Anyway, this one looked like hell when I moved it. and looked like hell for well over a month. And it's just starting now that we've got this cooler weather to really look nice, right? And this uh, Siberian kale is just, it's just my favorite kind of kale in terms of the flavor. And tenderness. It's much more tender than this sort of curly kale, right? This is nice too. I, we like this, right? But for me, this is just beautiful kale. I love it. Um, over here, um, got the leeks in full swing. And basically, anytime I'm making a soup, uh, I put the leek in. I'm a big fan of the uh, sort of PBS or whatever, public public television cooking celebrity Jacques, Jacques Pepin. And he always says that, you know, you know, leek is irreplaceable in soups and so on. So I've basically, well, well, why would he lie about a thing like that? <laughs> so uh, I've I tried to grow leeks this year and I, I pleasantly find that, uh, that you, know, you know, he's right. There is something they add to a soup. I can't really put my finger on it, but they're nice, right? They're a nice thing to grow. So, uh, yeah, I'm happy with those. I think I'm going to grow leeks every year from now on. Uh, parsnips, I haven't started picking those yet. Swiss chard. Picking that like crazy right now. This time of year, your Swiss chard really comes on. And as, as we get into the frost, it just improves and gets better and better. All right, so this one, uh, quite happy with this variety. I think this is giant Ford hook variety. Uh, it's done great. And this is about, for me, for my family, this is all the Swiss chard we need. Basically a four by eight beds worth, right? That's all the Swiss chard we need. Next year, I'll just move that. It seems to love growing right here at the base of this hill. So next year, I'll just put it where the parsnips are. Uh, over here, we got uh, just uh, uh, squash. Um, starting to harvest squash. It's about time to do it, right? So squash. Uh, zucchini is, believe it or not, still producing. And there's still some, some of the, the magda are still producing. And these, uh, whatever this variety was called, sunshine or something like that, these yellow zucchini, uh, they're producing as well. So... We've got zucchini coming out of our ears. Uh, I'm really happy with that. Oh, we're just about done eating zucchini. <laughs> We've got about three ways we eat them. And, you know, for all people that comment about making zucchini bread, um, I mean, zucchini bread is basically cake. And uh, there's only so much, <laughs> you know, if you're harvesting uh, 16 zucchini a week, uh, there's no way you could make that much cake and eat it and not you know, die. 
right? So <laughs> making zucchini loaf is not a viable means to use up excess zucchini. It, it, it's a viable means to use up a zucchini if someone gives you a zucchini and you don't like zucchini that much. So you surround it in chocolate and sugar and <laughs> eggs and all that stuff and make it taste good. But uh, yeah, this is uh, a lot of zucchini. I mean, I always, it's always better to have too much than too little. You know, this year... I didn't plant enough uh, beans, um, and I wish I, I normally plant three beds of beans. I only planted two, and uh, I had um, I just did not get enough beans this year. So uh, I will not make that mistake again. If there's something you really like, um, you know, plant a little bit more than you think you're going to need because you don't know how successful things are going to be. So I mean, I could probably plant half as many zucchini and have all the zucchini I want. Um, but what if something went wrong? <laughs> then I would not have the amount of zucchini I want. So I almost plant like 50% more. If something you really value, we really value zucchini. We like making relish with it. We like using it in stir fries. And uh, there's a way I make a salad out of I keep meaning to make a video on how I do that. But I make a, a salad out of an uncooked zucchini. It's delicious. It's wonderful. It's a great way to use it up. It's quick and it's easy to make. Um, we really like that as well. So I can't really do without zucchini in the air. I find them very easy to grow, low maintenance, pest proof, you know, just everything I like about a plant sticks a seed in the ground. <laughs> you know, once it gets to, uh, you know, once it gets, gets past being an infant, it's kind of an indestructible plant. Um, but yeah, I, yes, I have more than I need, but I think for things like this, things you really value, you have to plant maybe 50% more than you, you know, if 50% more than you need <laughs> to make sure you have enough that you need in case things go wrong. Uh, potatoes. I've been harvesting potatoes like crazy, and I'm just about done pulling all the potatoes out of my garden. Uh, in in this bed here, I had potatoes and peas growing. I had pea trellis going down the middle and potatoes growing on either side. I harvested all the potatoes just a couple days ago. They're inside uh, curing before they're packed away. I got a good, like, I don't know, maybe 30 pounds out of this bed, maybe even 40. It was a good amount, and they were all uh, Russet Burbank, I believe. Um, I think the last potatoes I have growing uh, are are here. They're in they're in this bed here. Looks like there's nothing growing here, but if I you know push my hand down into the ground um, anywhere along here, let's see, the garden will make a liar of me. Well, of course, <laughs> of course I can't. There we go. There's one. All right, there we go. Yep, see. More russets, I guess. Anyway, these have to come out. Maybe I'll pull them out today. You know, once the plants die, don't leave them in too long because they, they get attacked. You can see there's a hole in this one. And right, so something bored into it. Right, the longer you leave them, the more a chance of that is happening. Right, so probably today's the day to do this. Oh, my hands are all dirty. <laughs> uh, sun chokes. My sun chokes are still flowering. Look, this is like a... A 10 foot tall plant. Aren't they pretty, eh? I should have taken them as a cut flower and just put them on the dinner table to make Mrs. Maritime Gardening happy. Uh, but I didn't didn't think to do that when they were at their prime. And they're about a week past their prime now, these flowers. But they're like a beautiful daisy-like flower, so they make a great cut flower. And I mean, you're not after the fruit of these things, right? You're after the roots. So the flower doesn't do anything to improve the roots. Um, it's only an indication that it's still not time to harvest if you've got flowers, right? Anyway, these were, I think the tallest of these might be 10 feet tall, right? You can see way up there, right? So these are the ones that were given to me by chokedup.ca, and uh, I'm really happy with them. They gave me, I think, three or four different varieties. But, uh, yeah, it's still not time to harvest these. I just had a viewer ask me. Um, you want to wait till you have some really good, basically wait till the plant looks dead um, before you harvest them. These plants don't look dead. They got flowers and green foliage and they're doing great, right? So wait till the plant gets blasted by the frost. It's, it's, all the leaves are gone and it's turned sort of brown. That's when the root, because that's what you want, want from a sunchoke or a Jerusalem artichoke is the root. Right? Wait till the plant just looks destroyed. Then pull them out. Then you'll get the best flavor. Because that's when they start storing you know, as much energy as they can in the root and the roots chemical composition changes it's got more of a sugar in it and it's more sweet apples i should have apples in this tree 
pretty much ripe and ready to go. But uh, a bear got in the garden and ate all of them. Here's one with bear teeth marks in it. <laughs> so those holes like that. He probably stopped eating this one because it had so much sand on it. <laughs> right? Because they can't pick it up in their hands like you or me. I must have dropped this one in the sand. Uh, but anyway, the, I got no darn apples so i should be getting apples but i don't have them because a bear came in wrecked my tree wrecked my fence and ate all my darn apples over here these uh onions are just about done i only have a couple left in the garden to uh, harvest uh these uh broccoli still have some little little florets like this there's enough here for a stir fry you just you just snap them off like that and throw them in a bowl and you, know, you just keep doing that every every time you do a harvest the florets get a bit smaller and a bit smaller and it's a bit smaller but they're still harvestable right so you want to have if you like broccoli i'd say one four by eight bed of this it will basically give you one or two nice broccoli dishes a week right <laughs> so uh, it's it's a great thing to have in your garden uh these uh squash are uh, these are the sweet mama squash and they are like you know a good size you know on average i'd say seven to eight inches in diameter right good tasting good storing easy to grow squash totally happy with the sweet parma uh over here i got a late another late planting of bean that these are provider that is producing this was very late this garden was a bit of a, this was a garlic garden and after i pulled the garlic out i jammed some beans in it and some some weird some little squash the soil here in this bed is not particularly productive. It needs needs improvement, uh, and that's why these squash are so. This is the same variety as the ones I just shown you, but look how small and stunted and sort of pathetic they are. But beans don't care about lousy soil, as you can see. These these are provider for sure, uh, and they're turning out great, right? So you got lousy soil, stick in some beans. If there's still some enough season left to grow something, you should get beans as long as you've got sun and heat. Uh, these uh, cabbage are just about done a little bit uh, pest ridden this year, but uh, still uh, Serviceable so we're using those every time I need something like cabbage probably be harvesting some today because I'm gonna make uh, um, Sort of an Indian dish that uses uh, cabbage as like a side dish uh, over here we got uh, Egyptian walking onions these have just like all the little bulbs and stuff they basically started started regrowing these little things and this is the time to give these to your friends and plant them and so on. So they've already started regrowing, right? This this whole bed looked, probably the last garden tour, it looked kind of dead. And now there's all this growth, right? Uh, so anyway, what a low maintenance uh, way to garden. <laughs> right? I just planted these last, last year and just let uh, nature take its course. And uh, yeah, I basically got a perpetual source of, of you know, scallions or green onions. And uh, you can pull the whole plant and use the, you know, use the, the main sort of root or the main onion, the main bulb as like a shallot, right? And they're nice like that. These bigger, thicker ones like this, right? Nice and thick at the base, right? You can pull them and use, use, the, use the bulb at the bottom like a shallot. And you can dry them and keep them in your fridge for a couple of months like that as well so you can you can harvest and store them so all the really big mature ones with the exception of a couple that i missed uh about a month ago i pulled them i had big mature ones all around the perimeter i pulled them all out and uh you know, cured them the way you'd cure any other onion and just uh you know uh, they're in the in the garage <laughs> right they're being used up uh, i got some more kale over here I think maybe I planted too much kale this year. You know, every year I have two beds of kale, and uh, and I always feel like I've got more than I know what to do with. We use it up, but a lot of it ends up like these lower lower ones here, right? Where I just I can't do anything with that, right? You just get you just get broken off and basically mulched, right? So uh, I don't know. I'm gonna have to rethink having. I mean, I just said you should always have more than you need of something you really value. And kale is something we really value and like. Um, but, uh, boy, two beds might be too, I mean, given how productive they are, I don't know, I go back and forth in my mind about this. I See, I think if I had one bed and uh, um, was more, um, 
what am I trying to say? More attentive in my stewardship of that bed, protecting it from different pests and stuff like that. Uh, I'd probably get all I need. Um, so, I mean, I'll lose a lot of kale due to neglect, right? The plant will get attacked by pests and I'll basically just rip off 30% of the foliage and, you know, treat it with something and let it recover. And, you know, that, that's fine. But I think if I just, if every two weeks I just sprayed him with that Savers End all, I don't think I'd have, I'd probably have perfectly fine uh, kale, right? But anyway, I'm, I'm uh, starting to uh, ramble here, so we'll forget about the kale. Uh, over here, we got these butternut squash. Right? We got all kinds of them. It's just about time to uh, to harvest them. Every one of these is just right for me, anyway, for a meal for a family of four. This is a side dish, right? And they store well. You can see this one's getting that nice uh, sort of. I don't know. I don't, I don't know my colors very well. Uh, whatever you call that yellowish <laughs> I do not have uh, a good vocabulary when it comes to colors anyway it's yellowing right uh, which is kind of how you want them that thicker skin for storage see this one here is still still green sort of a lime green color right right whereas this one here is you can see them side by side more yellow right when they start to get like this so you know with these things you always have to cut it close to the frost but um, yeah, this is still not ready to be harvested, whereas this one is. It'll have a better flavor and a better taste and all that stuff. And of course, I got plenty of uh, beets over here. Anyway, that's where we are. Um, beginning of October 2021 or end of September. I don't know what the date is today. <laughs> it's anyway, it's like the last weekend of uh, uh, September or the first weekend of October. <laughs> Somewhere around there. 2021. Haven't had a frost yet. Uh, it's been a very warm uh, fall and as a result the garden is uh, more productive than normal. Uh, so there's lots of things going on, lots of things to harvest and lots of things still to come, right? Because it's not even time to start harvesting uh, parsnips yet or the sun jokes or things like that. So uh, anyway, I hope you found that video interesting. If you did, please like, share, subscribe. Check out my podcast, MaritimeGardening.com. If you don't listen to my podcast, I mean, I put it up on YouTube so you can watch me talk to my guests but if you just want to download it as a mp3 listen to it in your car as you're driving to work or on the you know subway <laughs> or whatever, however you get where you're going um, you can download it as an mp3 for free stick it in your mp3 listening to device thing and uh, listen to a couple guys talk about garden stuff for an hour or so um, you know we usually talk more about the idea you know here out in the garden I'm showing you and I'm doing things um, but, um, you know, a good part of gardening is thinking about it, Think, planning your next move, trying to figure out what went wrong, uh, thinking about different things, thinking about trying new things, and so on and so forth. So the podcast is where we sort of get into that, uh, the ideas of gardening. So um, anyway, I hope you found that interesting. Please like, share, subscribe, and until next time, get out there, get at it, have fun in your garden. Thanks for watching.